everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca and today we are taking on a really big project that is making a green wall in my plant room and just in general creating storage spaces and making this room more functional for my needs. This is a three season sunroom and it's sort of built like a lean to greenhouse on the south side of my home. So I have a bunch of south windows, basically a wall of south windows, a couple of west windows and two skylights. So this is the optimal plant room and I'm really excited to transform it. I am sitting in the finished product and I feel so proud that this is done and that I did it all myself. So without further ado, let's get into this crazy whirlwind of a room makeover. Today is officially day one of this refresh for my plant room. I want to give you a very accurate before shot of what this place looks like right now. And then you can get a really good idea of why I thought that this was extremely necessary. So let's just do a little quick survey around the room. First of all, we got this corner, which is like water holding slash boxes corner and this big plant corner. And then I have this little shelf on the window, which is holding up pretty well, honestly. Like despite it pulling away a little bit, it's not bad. I would still recommend <laughs> this whole situation. It's just an acrylic strip that I cut with a circular saw and then these are just little L brackets put on with some command strips. It's not like the most aesthetic thing I've ever done, but it gets the job done. So anyway, that's this corner. This corner is shoe corner and mess corner. So we got some lights up here. We got bug spray, flashlight, plants, and we have a plant shelf here. And then you turn and you are confronted with just the absolute worst scene ever. The furniture here is really taken over by all of the plants. I just have a lot of plants in here. Um, some new plants that I purchased that I'm actually going to be hanging up up here. That's pretty much why I got them because I knew that I would have space. I don't have the space now, but I knew that I would eventually, which was probably a bad decision, but I did it anyway. I have like my cacti and euphorbia over here, which this is not a great spot for them. It's really bad. Um, so we're going to transform this. My basic plan right now is to just hang a ton of plants on this wall because the ceiling goes up all the way up there. So I can go up pretty high if I want. And then that plant is going to come over maybe in the corner or just somewhere else. And then that shelf might go on this wall and we'll see what things look like from there. But I did purchase a storage unit. This is the best uh, storage unit. And I actually grabbed two of them. I grabbed the really long one and then the shorter one. And if I measured correctly, they should take up this entire wall down here. Fingers crossed that that is actually the case because if not, I don't know what I'm gonna do, <laughs> but hopefully it will fit exactly across the bottom here and that will give me a lot of space to like store things. And it'll also double as plant stands for my upright plants that can't be hung on the wall. So most of these plants are going to be hung on the wall if they can be because I want to really utilize this wall space. Still don't know what I'm gonna do with this corner, but probably this plant will stay here because it seems pretty happy. And it's so big, I don't really have anywhere else to put it. And I just cannot wait for it to be spring so that I can put it back outside. <laughs> okay, so the plant room has been cleaned up from the last time you saw it. <laughs> and even clean, it still is just too much going on. So anyway, today I am getting started building an Ikea piece that's going to go on this back wall. So I'm going to get started building that and you can enjoy watching. I'm going to put on a little Christmas movie and we're gonna get going. I've been feeling so small Watch the clock ticking off the wall But tonight I'm letting it go Stars, I wanna drive a faster car Nothing can break me, no, nothing 
nothing can break me. The piece is now finished being built and I'm going to remove everything that is in its path because I need to get the piece in, of course. So I need to move all of this furniture probably against the door and then I'm just gonna slide it right in. Um, I don't have any doors for the piece. I mean, sorry, not doors, legs for the piece. I'm gonna go no legs and see what I think but I might actually be wanting to put some legs on it. I don't know, I was looking at it and not that it's like too short because I want it to be kind of inconspicuous, but it might look kind of funny not having legs. So let's clear everything out and see what I think after it's installed. And I still have one more to build, unfortunately. When I'm in this town, look at the beautiful stars. I want to take a trip to Mars. Nothing can break me, no. Good morning everybody it's another day of our plant room makeover and last night i ended on a little bit of a sad note because as i was putting in the furniture that we built i didn't build the second one yet the second little unit um, because i was wanting to make sure that it would actually fit before i did all of that work and look at this i was about an inch and a half off with my measurements so i think what i did is i didn't think about Number one, the trim, and number two, the window trim. So I toyed with the idea of putting the other bench in another place, like the other storage bench in another place, like maybe along this wall right here. But then I was like, I really wanted to just have one long seamless storage unit. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut it with a circular saw to trim off that extra inch and a half. Um, now I'm gonna have to trim all of the pieces. It's just not gonna work otherwise. And I'm gonna have to trim also the door, one of the doors at least, because I think that this will fit two doors. Yeah, I think it'll fit two doors on this one. So I'm gonna have to trim one of the doors. And if you know Ikea furniture, it's very cheap and it's basically just like compressed boards. So it's gonna be very interesting doing this. I am going to like tape it off, do everything I can to keep it from like splintering and looking horrible. But at the end of the day, I bought the piece specifically for this spot in my house. And I don't know if I'll use it in another house. I might try to sell it before I move. Um, I don't, honestly, I don't know because that's so far away. So I'm just going to make it custom to work with what I have right now and not do my thing where I'm thinking like 10 years ahead and just do something that works for right now. <laughs> because my life is made up of moments of me being like, how is this gonna affect me in 10 years, five years, three years, two years? I'm just not gonna do that for once. So I'm gonna cut it. I'm nervous. I think I'm stalling right now, but we're gonna do it. I think that I did buy a new blade for our saw because it needed a new blade. So it'll be a fresh blade. I'm just nervous to make the cuts. You know what I mean? It's a lot of pressure but I'm just gonna mark it, be very thorough in my marking, and hope for the best. Okay, I'm in my garage, and I've set up the drill, or not a drill, what is this? I've set up the saw. <laughs> I just have a little hand saw. It's a four inch blade. We really need to get a bigger one, but all of our projects from you know here and previous, we only needed the little one. And I'm trying to wear safety glasses, okay? I, I'm really trying, but they keep falling off because I have real glasses. <laughs> I should probably be wearing contacts, but also I'm gonna use hearing protection because that saw is so loud. Make sure that you're protecting your ears, you guys. Your ears and your eyes are invaluable assets. Please protect them. <laughs> What's up? Hey, um, I think that the, the saw is dead. You think the saw is dead? Yeah. Yeah, because I'm cutting through what's basically pressed boards and it's like smoking yeah. and it's not cutting at smoking? all. Smoking? 
Yeah. yeah, I think we probably we probably ruined it. We need we need to get the Dewalt saw. Okay, having one of those moments where I'm reminded that real life is not HGTV. <laughs> so I went to start using our circular saw, and it's burnt up. It's not going to work. It really should not be having any trouble cutting through an IKEA piece of furniture but last time we were using it it was starting to like smoke a lot and basically we burned it up last time we used it and we thought changing out the blade might help but turns out not so anyway as I was moving all of the plants away from the wall I noticed that the wall was dirty anyway and I've been toying with the idea of repainting this room I really didn't want to do that because the ceilings are so high and it would be just so much work, but at the end of the day, this is the time that I should do it because I'm refreshing the room. Right now just makes the most sense. And also cherry on top, I found an extra can of Chantilly lace in the garage and I haven't used this since I painted the living room. So it's been a long time, so I'm gonna shake it up pretty good. And um, I might actually have it go get shaken by Ace Hardware. Um, because it's been sitting for a while, but yeah, I'm just gonna paint the room I won't need to prime it or anything because it's already white But just to give it a fresh coat and I feel like that will make it feel a lot better But in order to do that, I need to pretty much remove everything from this room <sighs> Which is gonna be intense So I'm gonna go work on some other stuff first that I need the sunlight for and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna paint the room It is another day working on this plan room makeover and I have a big announcement. The room has been painted and I've got some thoughts <laughs> on hiring someone to paint the room. Number one, I'm glad that it's done, but it, 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 he didn't do a great job. I'm gonna be honest, it, it wasn't good. Are the walls painted? Yes. Did he get a lot of paint on the ground? Also, yes. Did he get a lot of paint on my new Ikea piece? Yes. Um, the paint is white, so you can't really see it on here. And it's like from the splattering of the roller because he painted the ceiling, but for some reason didn't think to cover the entire floor, which uh, I'm trying to be positive. Um, but I did pay a lot of money for him to paint this room and it was just not good when I paint a room I cover the entire floor, you know, I completely make sure that everything is gonna be safe um, And he just did not do that and I don't know why there's like Fuzz painted into the wall in some places like the patchwork is um, leaves much to be desired so uh, It got done and I didn't have to do it um, was it more stressful that he did it bad? Probably, but it's done and I did the best I could to like clean up the floor It will come up with like warm water and like a scraper and I have a rug To cover it mostly. Uh, sorry exposing myself for wearing pajamas. I rolled out the rug again I have the other the first Ikea piece here. The other one still needs to be trimmed my, I'm still waiting for my new circular saw to come in the mail Apparently it's arriving today, which is December 22nd I don't believe that, but we will see. <laughs> it was shipped out via FedEx like two days ago, and I just feel like with the holidays, it's gonna be delayed, but we'll see. So as soon as I can trim those um, other pieces for the other Ikea piece, I'll be able to put that in, and then the plants can really start coming in because that will give me just like a better idea. You know how there's like an, an order of operations with a project? I feel like I need to have that done first before I can do really anything else. And I've already put so much stuff in this cabinet alone. Like these cabinets are very deep. So, oh, <laughs> that's gonna be a problem. Maybe I'll raise them just a little bit. <laughs> but I've already got so much stuff in here and in like all of them. So I'm pretty thrilled that that worked out and I'm gonna have even more with this. Like I think I will just be able to put all of my plant stuff in here and not have to have it anywhere else in the house, which was totally the goal. Anyway, I'm just gonna sort of play around and see what I can come up with in here. 
but I can't do any of that until that piece is done just for the order of operations in my brain. So I will catch up with you when I have my circular saw and when I can cut that piece, but I just wanted to give you an update on the painting. Hello everybody, I have exciting news. We received our circular saw, so let's go out into the garage and see how it works. Here she is. It is cold and rainy outside right now, so we're gonna be doing this with the garage door shut, unfortunately, which won't be the greatest view for you, but I'm gonna do my best. Yeah, I'm just gonna pick up where I left off. So this is my old piece that is, whoa! This is my old little saw that I was showing that is no longer. It's cordless, DeWalt, we're a DeWalt family. And, oh, I did buy some clamps to hold this down. Whoops. Because I was worried about it moving around while I cut it. So, I'm going to go get some clamps. Hold on. All right, I guess we'll just... <laughs> that was so smooth that I'm like, I would, the whole time I was doing that, I was like, is it even cutting? I did not feel a thing thing it literally cut like butter and I know that it's like hollow look it's like uh yeah the hollow stuff and it shouldn't be difficult to cut but cut to when I was cutting the first piece it was like a whole thing so this is exciting wow I barely even had to push okay that's what happens when you use the proper tools folks piece number two I don't think I even heard it bog down at all not at all Damn. So now I'm going to assemble the piece and then put it in place and I'll catch up with you once that is done. Okay, so the pieces are both in. This is what it looks like. It's just like a wall of storage. I need to adjust this door a little bit and then like make sure that they're even on both sides. Like this needs to come out a little bit more. Maybe this needs to go in. I don't know. That is not really going to be very noticeable. So I'm not gonna worry too much about it. But anyway, I have so much storage now. I was actually able to fit everything that I need to store in here in these two containers. Well, not everything, but like most things. So I have plenty because this is still empty. So what I'm gonna do now is place the plants that are going to go on top of here. And then I decided to put my big Adansonii in the corner here because I thought that it would be a really nice connection between this and the plants up there and also I have nowhere else to put it because it is so big and I decided that I'm still gonna have my shoe rack right here um, I had it in front of this window here before and it was the perfect size for like our shoes and then also to have a few plants on top of it so I'm gonna do that again and then I think that I'm going to rehang the shelf that I had right here because it was just like the perfect shelf the perfect shelf location although I might instead put it here so that the bottom shelf can also be like a key rack or something like that like maybe i'll dr like screw in like s or c hooks into the bottom of it so we can hang our keys on it because i did have a little bucket here before hanging on the wall and it ended up just being like another junk drawer which is <laughs> so classic but i'm thinking with that shelf that i had i'm going to just put in c hooks at the bottom and that should help us hang our keys because I am notorious for losing my keys and I need to have a specific place for them. fun update for this video so I actually received the hardware for my rolling ladder which is great I'm super stoked for this project like wow I watched a video on building a ladder yesterday for a ladder shelf specifically or not a ladder shelf a rolling ladder specifically in that and also in looking at the reviews for this particular piece and like looking at the photos of it actually finished I realized that I should probably mount it on a piece of wood like on the back so I'm going to get a 2 by 6 by 10 piece of 
cedar lumber. I can't really control where I have to drill this into the wall. And I don't know for sure if it's always gonna land on a stud. So what I can control though, is the wood board being it drilled into a stud. There's like, I think two or three studs in here, like one in the middle, one on, and then one on either side. So I will be able to mount the board in a couple different places. And then I was thinking another issue I'm gonna have when putting together the actual plant wall is the stud situation. Like I don't really want to hang these plants in an area that is just drywall. I've done it before, but I honestly, you know, I don't wanna do that again. It didn't feel very secure. And the last thing I wanna feel is like my plants are gonna fall off of the wall or like, yeah, crash into each other because honestly, if one fell, it would probably be like a domino effect. And then I thought to myself, what if instead of just hanging them up there, I put like more boards across the wall, but like skinnier boards, like a two by two or a two by three or something like that. I feel like in most cases they would be covered up by the pot, especially if it is only like a two inch, bo uh, two inch board because the pots are obviously four inches minimum. Like, and height wise, they're usually taller. So you would probably only be able to see the boards in the spaces in between the plants. And it would, I don't know, I just think that it would give me a lot more leverage to put up more plants than usual. And I've also thought about just putting up shelves instead of going through this madness with the hanging. And I could do that too, but I feel like I would rather hang them. And I have so many hanging clips, um, so. That is what I'm thinking right now. So I just need to get the truck from Daniel so that I can buy the wood to do that. And the space over, like the wall is actually a little bit over nine feet long. So I'm gonna have to get 10 inch boards for all of this and then cut them down. And thank God I have a circular saw because I can just do that really easily. But the real trouble is going to be getting it all level and I'm probably going to need help doing that. I'm relatively used to doing projects like this by myself, but I feel like, I don't know, I don't want it to look bad, but I could just like loosely screw it in on one of the studs and then bring it over to the other side and then make sure it's level. I think I could do that, honestly. So yeah, that is the situation right now. I wanted to update you because this hardware is really beautiful. It's like a nice matte black and then these wheels are super smooth. I was not sure at all how they <laughs> like got attached onto the pole or whatever. And then we have all of this, this other stuff like caps and whatever and then here are the wheels. And now it's time to start the most exciting part of this project, which is the green wall. So I went to the lumber store and I picked up some wood because I am making everything from scratch. So what I'm going to need is four two by two by eights, two two by four by tens, one two by six by 10, and one two by four by 12. That's a lot of dimensions and a lot of wood, but I will have all of that written in the description box below if you're wanting to make a wall similar in size to mine. And should say all of the wood that I got is untreated cedar. I have a preference for cedar because I just like the coloring, but you know, you can pick your favorite wood and go from there. I started out by measuring the wall again because you know what they say, measure twice, cut once. And then I went along the wall and found all of the studs and marked it with pencil. This is probably the most important part of the project because the entire reason I'm using the two by two by eight pieces of wood is so that I can have all of this in studs. It's extremely important to hang things in studs. If you don't do that, you can run the risk of things falling and ruining your drywall and just in general not having things be very strong in the wall. So very important to know where your studs are and use them. The first piece of wood that I'm going to cut is the two by six by 10. I had to cut off just a couple of inches because my wall is a little bit less than 10 feet long. The brackets for the rolling ladder railing are about three and a half inches long. So it would have been cutting it a little bit close to use a two by four. I didn't want to be drilling the railing in on the edges of the wood. So I went with a two by six just to keep everything secure. And then of course, after every time I cut, I made sure that I sanded down the edges to make sure that there weren't any splinters. The hardware for this project was really important to me and I needed to use very strong screws. So I asked around at the hardware store to see which ones would be best and they said the Spax three inch construction screws would be the best option. If you're doing this and you're mounting your ladder hardware on a piece of wood to put onto the wall, I would highly suggest that you put your ladder hardware on the piece of wood 
before you screw it into the wall because I did not do that and I had to take it all down and put it back up, which was not very fun because it was all very heavy and I was doing this all by myself. I will link down below the ladder hardware that I used for this project. I did end up buying an extender as well, but it would it would have been too long for the wall, just by probably a couple of inches. I thought about trimming it, but I decided not to, and I might still use it eventually and just trim it later, but yeah, not exactly sure yet. I haven't come to that decision, but even with a shorter rail, I think it still looks really nice. It's just that the ladder in its final form is a little bit more in the way than I would have wanted, but that's okay. <laughs> and also, if I have to give you any personal advice that I have from this situation, it would be to not do a home project that requires you to lift heavy things above your head right after you've done an intense arm workout. <laughs> <laughs> my arms were absolutely killing me and I almost dropped this thing on my head like four times just with the amount of times that I had to lift it up and down and up and down and balance it and everything. Now that the railing hardware is installed, it's time to move on to the actual ladder. Here I have my two by four by tens and I'm just doing a little bit of measuring to see how long I actually want this to be because the angle of your ladder will depend on how long you want it to be. So I was shooting for about an eight foot ladder because I didn't want it to come out super far into the room and take up a ton of space. I wanted my ladder to be a little bit compact. Because your ladder is going to be leaning, so it'll be sitting at an angle, you need to cut the bottom of the feet to also be at an angle so that it can kind of lie flush with the ground so that the ladder can roll a little bit easier. So I found a little hack through a YouTube video that I watched that I will link down below to get that perfect angle using a level. So I cut my first side of the ladder and then I used the first side as a template to cut the other side of the ladder. And I am so thrilled with how easy this was because honestly, it was one of the things in this project that I was most worried about. So here I'm just deciding how wide I want the ladder to be. I made mine about 16 inches wide. There are actual ladder standards um, to keep your ladder to code. You can definitely look that up online, which I did. And the answer that I found was the ladder should be about 16 inches wide. Actually it was like 16 to 20 inches wide, I think. And the spaces between the rungs should be about a foot. So here I am cutting all of the rungs. So these are all 16 inches long and I ended up cutting seven rungs in total for an eight foot ladder. By far the most tedious part of this project was just making sure that the rungs were positioned correctly. So I had a 12 inch block, a one foot block of wood that I used to space these out, but I realized that these all had to be put on at an angle so that, you know, when the ladder was at an angle, the rungs would be straight, which seems so confusing, but just trust me, <laughs> I used a little off cut from when I cut the angle off of the sides of the ladder to create that angle. As you can see, I'm like tracing it out right here and positioning and tracing out where the wood should be, which again was 12 inches apart. And you want to make sure that you transfer those markings onto the other side of the ladder as well so that you can line everything up perfectly. And then it was time to actually screw the, the rungs onto the ladder, which I just feel like this is probably not the best solution, but it's what worked for me doing this by myself. And I promise that the ladder is very, very secure. So I made sure that I lined it up underneath where the lines were, where I marked, and then I drill in two screws to both sides. These are the same Spax screws that I showed earlier. So yeah, it's a little like star top, so make sure that you have the correct bit for it. Sometimes the boxes will come with the bit, but it didn't, so make sure that you have one of those or else you're gonna be looking for a bit. <laughs> Once all of the rungs are screwed into the side one of the ladder, all you have to do is lay it on its side, match up all of the markings and screw in side two using two screws on each rung, just like you did the other side. And then that is the actual ladder part. Now onto the wheels. So the wheels need to be disassembled in order for you to actually screw in the little bracket for the wheel to sit in. It was a little bit difficult to get my drill in there, so I did have a screwdriver on standby. And then once the wheels are attached, you can put your ladder up against the railing and decide 
where you want the top wheels to be. I didn't film that part, but all I had to do was just screw the top rails into the top of the ladder. It wasn't that exciting. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It's the next day after I built my ladder and oh my gosh, you guys, I did that. I freaking did that and I'm so excited. Um, just really, really proud of myself. Honestly, I was putting off doing this for a couple days because I just felt very unprepared. Like I definitely shouldn't be doing this. This is way out of my wheelhouse. And I just decided to do it. And I would suggest if there's a project in your life that you feel you're unqualified for, you should do it. <laughs> And of course safely, but I felt pretty good about doing it after I watched this super helpful video, which I probably have already referenced and told you about. I'll link it down below as well. But yeah, I just decided to go for it and see what happened. And I feel like I've built more complex things in the past, like with help. So it felt pretty okay. And this ladder is very solid. Like she is, um, a strong girl she's not going anywhere so there's two screws on either side of the rungs just to make absolute certain that it's secure and um the hardware for the actual rolling part of the ladder is great daniel came home and was like messing with it and was like oh i think that we could like do this do this like just some like fine tuning things to make it work better so i told him you know if you want to fine tune it feel free but i'm fine with it as it is right now like it works it's safe um, but you know, Daniel might fine tune it because he's more of a perfectionist than I am in that regard. All things said, I'm super happy about it. And the next thing that I have to do that I'd like to do today is put these pieces on, which is what the plants are actually going to be attached to. So I think before I put it on, I'm going to attach all of the hooks onto it first, just because it's easier on my arms. I did a pretty... Um, I, I went to a bar workout yesterday before I started this project and honestly that was a bad decision because my arms were just like shaky and like holding something heavy above my head was just like not my favorite thing in the world. But um, now that I have the ladder, it'll be easier to hang things a little bit higher and I only got four of these wood pieces for now. I definitely could go get more. They were not expensive at all. Um, so I'm just interested to see like how this is all gonna look in the end because it feels like my vision is sort of coming together. I think in total, this project only cost me like $300, which is insane because if you were to buy a full kit to make these, it's like $1,500. So it's just insane and it's not hard to build a ladder. So it's just like you have the angles and if you want it to be like a really perfect and like cute ladder, um, mine is definitely a functional ladder it's not like super beautiful in any way but i still need to take it down and like sand it and like seal it and finish it i don't know if i'm gonna do that in this video because i'm really not rushing to do it i think maybe in a couple weeks if i'm bored or something i'll do it but i need to do it before probably summer because my life's gonna get a lot busier in summer with other things so anyway that's the update there so now i'm just going to decide how far apart I want all of the pieces to be on this piece of wood, on the several pieces of wood, and see how many I have um, as far as hooks go, see if I need to order more. All right, so now it's time to make our rows for actually hanging the plants. So I have shown these plant hooks in many videos before. I will have them linked down below, but basically you can hang terracotta pots on them. Very simple. So what I did was I had 10 hooks per pole and I spaced them out about nine inches and three quarters apart from each other. That leaves about five to five and a half inches on each side. Honestly, the math isn't perfect. And if you want to take the time to do the math perfectly, I suggest that you do that. <laughs> Mine is definitely not perfect, like perfectly symmetrical on both sides. I think one of the sides has like an extra inch or something. It was a little off, but I really don't care to be honest with you. <laughs> However, I really did care that the wall itself was symmetrical, so I measured the center point of the ladder board, marked that, and then marked the center point of all of these little plant boards, and I made sure that all of those center points were lined up. That was really important to me because I didn't have somebody with me who could tell me, oh, move it over to the left, move it over to the right. I had to sort of find a system to do that on my own. 
I spaced out the plant rods six inches from the ladder rod and then when I added on the second row of plant rod, it was 12 inches from the first plant rod. To actually get this up on the wall, I referenced back to that center point and I screwed in on the stud closest to the center point and then I used my long level to make sure that it was level and then I sort of teeter-tottered the plant rod up or down however I needed to do it to make sure that it was level and then once that was done I was able to add in all of the other screws along the studs which I had previously marked. As I was doing this I was very conscious of not wanting the ladder to hit the plants as it was rolling by and to be honest with you I will at no point be rolling on this ladder like Belle from Beauty and the Beast so it's fine I can be careful about it but still I decided to put the six inch pots the larger pots at the bottom rack and then the smaller pots up a little bit higher where the angle of the ladder is a lot closer to the wall. Hi everyone, I am finishing up the wall today. So I'm going to hang the last two little pole things. Um, I brought in the furniture last night because I was just tired of seeing the space empty. I wanted to see it start getting filled up. So I brought in the furniture, at least some of it, and it looks like a mess because I had to take down the ladder to trim the top. So now the top is all trimmed up. It was like probably, I don't know, six, seven inches too long at the top, but I'm getting pretty excited. It looks really, really good, and I'm just ready to reveal it. So do you guys wanna see the final room? Because I think I'm ready to show you. I'm so excited. Let's see the reveal in three, two, one. about this. This room feels so much cleaner. It feels so much more functional. And I just feel so good knowing that number one, I did all of this by myself. And number two, I have created a space that is beautiful, functional, and um, refreshed. <laughs> I am going to have an additional video go out that is basically like deleted scenes and extra footage during this project that I didn't want to put into the final video just for length purposes. But um, yeah, that'll be coming out in the next couple of days and I'll show basically repotting a bunch of plants on, along this wall for the plants on planks and everything. I really wanted to document the beginning of my plants on planks journey, but I just didn't make it into this video. So I am still gonna put it out in a different capacity, like a deleted scenes type of thing. So anyway, hope that you enjoyed this room makeover. Let me know down below what's your favorite part and that'll be all. So thank you so much for watching this video and being patient with me as this took me pretty much like a month and a half to do <laughs> but yeah I'm really proud and I hope that you enjoyed and I will be seeing you in the next video bye